Hey guys, welcome to another video, and in this video, I will be talking about subspaces. So what I want to do is first I want to define what a subspace is, and then I want to show how we can determine whether or not a given space is a subspace of another space. So let's begin by loosely defining what a subspace is. So we can say that a subspace is a space that is entirely contained within another space. So let's consider the vector space Rn and let's define a subspace and let's call it W. So we write this as W is a subspace of Rn. And all that W is is a portion of Rn that is entirely contained within our vector space Rn. Now there are some restrictions on what we can choose as a subspace because there are three rules that must be obeyed in order for a space to be considered a subspace. The first is that it must contain the origin. The second is it must be closed under addition. And the third is that it must be closed under scalar multiplication. So as long as all three of these criteria are satisfied, along with the fact that our space is entirely contained within the vector space that we are considering, then we can conclude that W is a subspace of Rn. So let's take a look at each of these rules and let's take a look at the first one, which is that a subspace must contain the origin. So in order for our subspace W to be a subspace of a vector space, then W must contain the origin. Or in other words, the zero vector must be an element of our subspace W. And if our vector space that we are in is Rn, then we know that this zero vector is just an n-dimensional vector of zeros. So in this case, there are n rows and n entries that are all zero. So as long as this n-dimensional zero vector is in our subspace, then it satisfies the first rule. So for example, if we consider the vector space R2, which is just the uh, xy plane, then for any given subspace of R2, that subspace must contain the origin right here, which is going to be the vector 0, 0. And notice how since we are in R2, we are dealing with two dimensional vectors, and that is why our zero vector has one, two entries. So that's what I mean by a subspace must contain the origin. So the second rule is that a subspace must be closed under addition. So let's consider our subspace W, which is a subspace of Rn. And in order for W to be closed under addition, what this means is that if we take any vectors in W, so let's, let's say that W includes the set, W includes a set of W1, W2, dot, 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 and it includes the set of all these different vectors in Rn, then if we take two of these vectors, for example, if we take w1 and w2, and we add them together, then the sum of these two vectors must also be an element of w. So if we can pick out any two vectors in our subspace w, and if we add them together like we did right here, then what we should get is another vector that is also an element of w. And if that is true for all vectors, then we can say that the subspace is closed under addition. So the last rule is that a subspace must be closed under scalar multiplication. So this is kind of similar to the previous rule about being closed under addition, except for now, if we consider our subspace W, which we will say it is the set of these W vectors for however many vectors. So if this is our subspace of Rn, 
And if w is to be closed under scalar multiplication, what this means is that if I pick out any vector in w, so let's say I pick out this guy right here, if I pick out any vector, and we'll consider the case of w1, and I multiply it by a scalar c, then what I get, the product of this, the scalar product of this, must also be an element of w. So if this is true for all vectors in our subspace w, then we could conclude that our subspace is closed under scalar multiplication. So those are the three rules that a subspace must obey. The first, it contains the origin, or the zero vector. The second is any two vectors in our subspace w must also be an element of our subspace. And that, that is just the, the uh, closed under addition property. And then the last rule was that if we take any vector in w and multiply it by a scalar c, then this scalar product is an element of w. And this was just the property of being closed under scalar multiplication. So now what I want to do is I want to relate this idea of a subspace to the previous video that I talked about, which was span. So remember that I said the span of a vector set that we'll define like this for Vn. So a span of any vector set, we can say that this is equal to the set of all linear combinations of the vectors in this set, right? So if we consider this statement right here, then what we can recognize is that this span, a span of any vector set, is in fact a subspace. So first, if C1 is equal to C2 all the way to Cn, if all these are equal to zero, then what we have is a zero vector because we get zero times v1 plus zero times v2 and when we add up a bunch of zero vectors we get a zero vector so this zero vector is an element of the span of this vector set so we know that the span of a vector set contains the origin so now let's make sure that this is closed under addition so if I consider a vector w1 then I can define it like this form right here which I can express this as C1V1 plus C2V2 plus all the way to CNVN. And I can take another vector and I can express it the exact same way, except for instead of using Cs, I'll use Ds. DV1 plus D2V2 all the way to DNVN. And if I were to add W1 plus W2 together, then what I get is C1 plus D1 V1 plus C2 plus D2 V2 and so on. So what we see here is that the coefficients are just a different scalar. It's just another constant, which means that it fits this form up here. So we can conclude that since W1 and W2 are arbitrary, that the sum of these two vectors is in the set of the span because it fits the same form. And we can use the same reasoning to verify that this space is closed under scalar multiplication. So again, if I take a W1, which I will define as C1V1 plus C2V2 and so on, and I multiply this by a scalar, what I get is just C times C1V1 plus C times C2V2 the C's just distribute through all these terms, where once again we could recognize that C times C1 and C times C2, these are just more constants. And we can see that the scalar multiplication of a scalar times a uh, vector in W, or a vector in our, in our span, fits this same form of the set of the span. So we can conclude that this is closed under scalar multiplication because we know that the product, the scalar product, is in the set of the span. So what we've just done is proved that the span of any given vector set is a subspace of the vector space that they exist in. So if our v1 and v2, if these are all elements of 
R3, meaning that, that these vectors are three-dimensional and they, they each have three components, then the span of this, the span of V1, V2, would be a subset of R3. And similarly, let's say that this vector set, V1, V2, V3, all the way to Vn, let's say that, this, that our vector set is now, um, they all have uh, six components. So they are elements of R6. Then that means the span of this vector set, the span would be a subspace of R6 now, since our vectors are six dimensional. So anyway, in the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through some examples and we will go over the rules and prove each rule is true and we will show that a given space is a subspace of another space. So I will see you guys in the next video and thank you for watching. Let's say it is equal to the set of all vectors of the form a plus 2b, a minus b, and 3b